one hour. So, Okay, so everyone, how are you for today? So far, so great. How are you? How are you, Meng Huang? How are you, Wang Sofei? I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm good as well. So let's... I think everyone, please wait for a while. We are having a little bit of a technical uh, difficulty. So we'll be back soon when Bong Sofei is back. Uh, while, while you are uh, here, uh, maybe you can leave questions for us when you, if you want to say hi or mm -hmm. anything. I am not sure how to see the comments. <laughs> so, internet is unstable right now. Uh, when we testing is every. Convenient and uncomfortable. Okay, so now everything is good. Okay. Huang and Li Dad. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Welcome to the reflection. As you know, the reflection is a platform where young Cambodian women or men can share their knowledge, their experience with the other or other success story as well. And this is a great opportunity for our Cambodian fellow with potential to share their success story. And we hope our audience will enjoy the live streaming. We also welcome any sort of comment with positive or negative as well. And we will handle your question as soon as much possible. And if you guys have any question, you can drop in the link or in the chat box in the comment as well. Okay, so actually I also want to apologize in advance for uh, our unexpected mistake while the live streaming because it's our first time as well, right? Mei Huang and Li Dai? Yes, of Yes, course. so, well, tonight I am here with our guest speaker, uh, Yin Xin Li Dai, a potential woman in technology. Currently, Li Dai is a research fellow at Nanyang Technological University in Singapore by presuming AI. While Kai Mi Hong is just a high school student in grade 11 in Pien Chikong High School in Kampung Cham province. She also the winner in Technovation Girl as well. So our topic today is girl in tech. So how can women and girls cultivate their passion for technology? 
what are their challenges and what can be done more to support them so those answer will uh, will be So, so. So may, maybe the internet issue as well. Uh, that that is uh, the problem of our live streaming. Yeah, we already tested, and uh, but when we live streaming, we still have some problem. Yes, actually. Uh, so before we starting our uh, discussion, uh, so how? So, so Lida uh, and Mei Hong, are you clearing? Uh, are you hearing me right now? Yes, loud and clear. Yeah. Yes. Let's start our uh, before starting our session. Like, uh, how was your day, uh, Lida? Well, um. I would say it's very happening today. Um, I have just uh, been to a site visit to deploy one of our work at the actual place. So it was nerve wracking and exciting. And yeah, and then the evening we have this uh, sharing session and meet up. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty, pretty nice. So, so how about my home? How was your day? You look so charming today. Yes, of course, Mom. Well, today I um, just finished the meeting with Technovation Girl as well. And now we have a live stream on our talk show. So, so excited today. Yeah, you look so busy right now. Yeah, Mom. Well. Okay, it's okay. So let's go deeper to our discussion about the girls in tech. So the first question I would like to ask uh, Linda, so how... Do you see what are the roles of technology in human life, especially AI? Lida, the question is your. All right. So um, before, I, I think everyone has heard of the word AI before, right? Uh, uh, AI refer to artificial intelligence that refer to the study process that learn from the data intelligently and independent, independently. Uh, so the question is, what is the role of technology in human life, especially with AI? I would say, Almost everything that we do involves technology and in almost everything that we do, for example, all of us must own a smartphone, right? So in a smartphone, just unlocking our smartphone is already a technology and AI. 
fusing into it to in, in order to recognize our face and uh, unlock our phone. So we can see that AI and technology has been in our life, in our everyday life. And uh, to answer the questions, uh, technology uh, and AI has been helping us, assisting us making decisions in real life and also assisting us in routine work so that we ha can have more time to do more creative work. For example, it can help us with reasoning, providing uh, second opinions, forecasting, making decisions with analysis and um, insight for a particular task. It could also be our virtual assistant, for example, helping us arranging our schedule in the calendar so that we don't need a secretary. We have an AI secretary. Uh, there's also automated, defined and bounded tasks such as prediction, uh, localization, uh, do recommendation, giving us personalized experience. For example, right now on Facebook, we can see the news that we, we, we are interested to see. We, uh, in our learning experience, it also help us personalize our learning uh, curriculum and all that. And there's so much more. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It seems to be a lot of function of uh, technology and AI as well. Like even though we are live streaming right now, also the uh, based on the AI alert as well, right? Okay, thank you. And uh, back to Mei Huang. So when Mei Huang, uh, when are you starting uh, discover your 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 passion in technology, Mei Huang? Yeah, Vaughn, well, thank for your question. For me, first time I then interested and. In uh, technology or in STEM at all, but when I in, I was introduced to know the code.org website. So at the time I have used the code.org website. So I used this website to learn uh, the basic knowledge of coding. So after that, I start to interested in tech, uh, in technology and as well as coding. And after that, after I joined Technovation Girl for two years, I start to discover myself that I'm passionate about technology and I want to be a uh, software developer in the future and like I want to carry it related to the technology that's why I'm so interested in technology and I always consume my uh, technology knowledge like my coding knowledge so uh, I start to uh, passionate about it since I joined technovation yeah well. okay so so uh, do you see any question or any problems in the community that lead you to interested in the technology Mei Huang? Yes, of course, Bong. Well, by the way, when I'm joining Technovation Girl, I uh, I have to solve the, my community problem. So at the same time, I and my team have discovered uh, some problem uh, from my community, which is um, education problem, uh, mostly in related to education. So after we um, we brainstorm our idea on those problems, and after that, we have to decide to choose a one solution for that problem. So. Uh, after that, I I have an idea that technology can solve the uh, human problem. That's why uh, I'm really interested in it. Like I like to, I continue to do it uh, until I'm finished my project. Yes. Wow, that that sounds interesting. Okay, so I would like to ask early uh, that. Uh, so how can the technology can solve the uh, human problems or community problem as well? How? how technology could solve the community problems. I think um, there's so many ways that can, we can use technology to solve uh, the community problems. I think one, the first thing that we do is similar to what uh, Meng Huang actually talked about is we need to brainstorm what actually the problem that we want to solve. Because what I found is that right now, I think in the future we will reach more general AI and all that, but I think right now uh, the AI solution, machine learning solution is a bit more bounded, so meaning that we need to specify the problem first uh, and then we can decide uh, using technology to help. For example, um, we want to understand how the, how the uh, greenery impact the human life, uh, human comfort, uh, well-being, how it add value to our mental health and physical health. So we have so much data, so much sensor these days. So sensors that we put out there in the environment is indeed a technology, right? So with all these big data, we start to uh, choose, select the uh, machine learning, the technique uh, to analyze, give us insight uh, for policymaker, for us to uh, uh, solve 
a particular problem. So I think uh, that would be my answer to that question. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you. Uh, but with that, so uh, what are your accomplishments that you have been made regarding to the technology that can solve the problem issue as well? Well, <laughs> for, for my experience, um, uh, I have been involved for quite uh, a bit of projects uh, since I come to study in Singapore. Uh, in my final year of uh, uh, undergraduates, uh, I did a bit of uh, uh, emotion recognition using the webcam camera to uh, look at your emotions. And but based on that emotion, we can do uh, a bit play music based on your emotion. For example, you are feeling angry, you can play music to calm yourself down. So this is what I did, a little thing that I did when I was in undergrads. Then I start to be interested in the facial recognition, facial emotion recognition. So I continue my PhD. So in my PhD, I uh, make use of the uh, wearable sensors uh, to help uh, patients exercise at home. So that uh, if we call it something called like uh, telehealth, for um, instead of going to visit doctor every week, we can visit uh, maybe every month instead while we are monitored. The doctor could monitor your progress at home by wearing those sensor uh, exercise and those sensor can, you, can give you reminder, can tell you uh, that you are doing something wrong. Uh, then moving forward, I also, uh, when I start working, I, I start to uh, work on the uh, indoor localization. Basically, uh, when you are outdoor, you use GPS, right? Everyone use GPS to go somewhere. But yes. when you are indoor, you have the roof on top. So the GPS signal cannot penetrate. So that's where you do not know where you are indoor. For example, in a big shopping mall, in underground train station, you need a techn technology called indoor localization. And that te uh, technology making use of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth to know where you are. And then this technology, when uh, our team work on it, we uh, apply to uh, people living with dementia. Uh, uh, in Cambodia, we call it Ngu Wong Beng. So for example, uh, when the elderly, uh, old patients, uh, they, they, they are lost indoor. So we can use this technology to track and know where they are. So the caregiver will not be too uh, worried. And then currently, I'm uh, studying the correlation of greenery to human well-being as well. So yeah, quite quite a bit of things that I I think I'm, is really a privilege to be involved in and it keep me excited every day yeah so you, you seem to be happy and excited when speaking about the technology or ai yeah. yes <laughs> so, so regarding to uh, the health issue like the health project that that you already mentioned have you launched it yet uh i i would say that has been tested has been in test, testing phase i i would say um it would take a little bit more time to actually uh, proof. We, we do something called proof of concept, but uh, along the way, we still need to prove and prove and prove because when something is related to health, we do need to test a lot. So that was uh, something I was involved in. And I think uh, toward that part, right? I think the exciting part is I could see the process from uh, research to a product productizations of the research, meaning that we are trying to put the research in real life uh, usage. So yeah, but I would say it's a, still a work in progress, but uh, uh, it's fun to see all that being in, 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 in the pipeline. Yeah. Yes, I, I hope it uh, make it in the reality and useful for everyone and can export to Cambodian as well. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So so back to my home, uh, a young little girl, just 11, uh, grad 11, as I know, right? Yes, mom. Yeah, but you have been made a lot of accomplishments. So uh, one app that, that you use, uh, Cheva language like, right? That you, you yeah. create the app like uh, Green Earth. So what is app about? Can, can you tell us and how did you create it? Of course, Wong. So thanks for your question. For this app, uh, Green Earth, so I met this app during I joined the 11 year convo contest program. So Green Earth is an app that can help people um, to know clearly about what exactly climate change is. And it's also a tip to uh, a tip to debate for the climate change as well. So I I I work with my teammate um 
two uh, one one of my teammates are Cambodian and two of my teammates are Korean. So we work together to um to create this app using Java language as a programming uh language and also like we to create this app but we have faced a lot of challenge behind of this. Uh, for me to learn Java language, like I don't have any teacher, I don't have any class to learn the Java, but where I can learn it, I learn it from Google, I learn it from YouTube, and that's really challenging with me because I have to spend uh, 10 hours a day to learn uh, the Java language, and also we have a uh, limit time to do this app, that's why we have to spend a lot of hours to make this app uh, to be done uh, in only 20 days. So I met this app only 20 days to help uh, our people to combat with the climate change. And also this app uh, now for today are being um, launched in the app store as well. Yes. So, so what is the purpose of creating this app? Uh, the purpose of creating a uh, green app is to uh, help people to know about the climate change, like how climate change is and how it can destroy our world, our planet, and also uh, the, the tip for the people to combat the climate change, to uh, help to reduce the climate change. Yeah, yeah that, that's nice. So you're working with the national uh, Cambodian and also the Korean, yeah. right? to yeah, make it app. So any barrier or, or challenge, is it difficult to make this app or process working with uh, two different nations? Of course, well, the first um, challenge is the time. Like uh, in Cambodia and in Korea, there's time different. So we really difficult to meet each other with a so meeting because of the time different. Um, and one more thing, uh, which I mentioned before, is about uh, uh, where we can learn coding, where we can learn Java to create this app. And one more thing, at the same time, I joined the other ECA activity, uh, ECA activity. So at the same time, I joined out of the other competition. That's why I have to manage my time to handle all those work. Like I have to join, uh, I have to met other app, and also at the same time, I have to make a green us app. So which is. I'm really difficult to manage my time, but at the end of the day, I can do it. Yes. Wow, it, it's so much. It's so much, right? So how, how can you manage those tasks? A lot of tasks like you are in the high school, so you have extra activity, in school and other class as well. So how can you manage with uh, extra curriculum as well? Yes, of course, well, for me, as I'm a student who study at NTS school, it's meant a new generation school. So we have to spend eight hours a day uh, to learn at school with the teacher. And I have to research more and do homework. By the way, I also have to join the other ECA extracurricular activity. That's why the, uh, how I manage my time. So I set the prioritized work, which is uh, what exactly what is what the important work I have to be done first. So I uh, list down it on my uh, to-do list. So what I have to do first, I set it on the top. Like I set the prioritized work. So I take list it like oh, in today, uh, how many work I can be, I have it done. So I take it and also I use Google reminder, like remind me of what I should be done today and what I should do today. So I think, the important thing is to set prioritize works and manage your time clear and manage your time and as well as uh, I have to be uh, have a balanced life between my study, my academic journey, and also the entertain. So this is uh, the way I can manage my time. Wow, that that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay, interesting. Okay, so uh, back to Lee Dad. Uh, Lee Dad, how do you think like uh, Meng Huang just a rural area? Then uh, her high school is in a uh, Gongmias uh, district in Kampung Cham province. So I think the material or uh, that school is so far away from the province as well. But she have done a lot of things regarding to technology. So how how do, do you think about that, uh, Lee Dad? I think. That's great. And it's also a, a power of technology, right? Because without the internet access, without the technology, it's really hard to learn. It's because Bing Hong has actually said that she learned Java online. So this is itself is opening us up to so many things that we can do, we can learn. And from what I heard, from what I see, there's no limit to it. And regardless of where you are, uh, so long you know how to use the internet, 
you understand English a bit <laughs> to, to be able to learn, I would say uh, we do not need IELTS, but <laughs> as long as we could understand those uh, language and learn by ourselves. And I think uh, another thing that Ming Huang uh, mentioned, which is really important, is time management and also um, prioritizing your tasks, uh, choosing what you need to do um, is really important because these days, um, there's so many events. I think the great things about being connected all the time is we are getting access to so many information, so many opportunity, but at the same time, we need to pick and choose what really challenges us and then we go for it. And then how to go for it, you need to really break the big problem down into a smaller task. And then in a smaller task, you put it into a to-do list that you were saying, right? And to link it as well to a researcher life that my life today, uh, working life is that uh, when I go through the PhD, it's like for me to train myself to look at a problem, uh, break the problem down, plan it monthly, yearly into reach uh, methodology, test it and everything. It's similar to what Meng Huang do. It's just that we are planning a little bit more long term into three months, four months, six months. And then each week, each day, I go and look at my to-do list as well <laughs> to see what I have complete and then how does it reach my goal. So yes, that's what I think, Bong. Okay, so uh, sound interesting. Okay, early that how how uh, the technology can change your lives. Yeah, I think it's similar to Meng Hong. I think my journey is similar. I I'm blessed because uh, I think my parents really raised me uh, in in a way that they allow me to make decision by myself, and because of that. I dwell into technology. I think they just put computer in front of my face. And at that time, it was Windows 95 and then Windows XP. So <laughs> you can imagine those days. So uh, I, I was interested in computer game, in typing, and anything I had to do with computer. So it's where I got exposed to uh, technology. And then after that, uh, there's a time in high school that uh, internet come into play. So I start to go to internet cafe, learn a little bit more thing from the internet. I start to be really interested in computer. And um, I, 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 I went to learn computer maintenance, uh, computer programming uh, and all that. So that's how I get started. I forgot your question, sorry. What was your question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so how the technology can change your life? Your life. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was how technology changed my life because I start to be interested in technology. And then when I finished high school, I started to choose the major. Uh, at night time, a lot of people would choose civil engineer. I, I, I think uh, heads off to people who choose civil engineer. Uh, it's, it's, it's really a great major, but I think it's not really a calling for me. Uh, I, uh, my parents, uh, they give me decisions. Uh, to, uh, they, they give me uh, the, the, the freedom to make decisions, but they do ask me, why do I want to be to go for civil engineer? Why do I want to go for mechanical engineer? Why is that? And then later I start to discover that I'm really interested in computer. Anything that, I feel like just this small machine can do so many things. I can program, I can learn, I can play game. Yeah, so many things. So that's where it gets started. And I think that itself uh, changed my life. And now I make a real hour of it. So it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Just a small one can do many things. How about a big one and a giant yeah. one? Now yeah. we have supercomputer, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so Lida, uh, can you compare uh, women or girls in Cambodia in Singapore regarding to the technology? Oh, so the question is more of like, how do you, do I see yeah, life yeah. in Cambodia and then compare to life in Singapore? Yeah. Especially uh, women and girls. Yeah. Okay, um, I do not know where to start, but I think uh, the first thing, I think as a Cambodian girl coming to Singapore for the first time to study a bachelor degree, undergrads. So I start to see, wow, there's more, move, more women than I think in this major. <laughs> because in Cambodia, uh, at that point of time, there are fewer women who are interested in tech, there are fewer women who go into engineering. I, I don't think it's uh, anything wrong. It's just that uh, uh, more people are interested in some other place or we do not see the potential in this field 
a, in Cambodia. So when I come to Singapore, I start to see that, uh, okay, my classmate, I have more female classmate. Uh, we mm. click, uh, we work just like the guy. <laughs> There's no much difference. Like we are really interested as a human being. And then now that I'm working as a research fellow, going into a PhD and then finishing, I start to mentor undergrad students as well for their final year projects or their Eureka research project when they are in year two. So I start to see, oh, I have more stu female students. So now I, I feel like there are more female students. Yeah. So that's, that's I, sort of what I see in a glimpse, uh, how uh, the transition actually changed. But looking back to Cambodia and I, I see a um, young uh, girl like uh, Meng Huang starting start to be interested in tech. So I think in this, uh, Cambodia, Singapore, I think there are more women who are really invested in this field. Yeah. Yeah, you, you seem to be proud as a woman in technology, right? Yes, I, I, I literally make this comment in my team uh, recently. It's like, wow, happy <laughs> Women's Day. We have more women in our team than men. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's great. Okay, back to Meng Huang. Actually, I also uh, seen you are uh, passing in a chain program to the United States as well, right? So how technology, how your activity can lead to the path of that exchange program? Yeah, Wong, that's a, very, that's a valuable question for me. So uh, to pass the tech girl, I think I pass it because of my past experience in technology. So in the tech girl program, uh, uh, they said that they will be selected a girl from any country uh, regarding to their uh, their, their technology experience. Like for me, when I apply for it, I uh, in my CV, I put that I have joined a lot of uh, extracurricular related to technology, like code book girl, like US 21 competition, or uh, technovation girl, and also Illuminia console contest. And I have mentioned that I have uh, create a lot of app uh, to solve the uh, to solve the paper problem in my community. Because of this, I think that they will, uh, uh, and also in the interview round, they also asked me about how how I can learn technology, how I can interested in technology, and how I use it, technology to solve the problem. Uh, and after I replied to that question, they just got surprised and uh, they asked me more and more about my tech experience. And also, I think like because of this, because of my experience and technology, that's made me that's led me to success in the um in the tech girl program, the exchange program. And one more thing, I have mentioned that I want to become a software developer and I take a uh, and I take a computer science as my major. And this is what they want. Like they want to select a girl who want to uh, who passionate and tech. That's why I passed this program. Thank you, Wong. Yeah, just yes. not only them that wonder why are you can learn a lot of yeah. technology. So can can you tell us right now how can how can you learn? <laughs> of course, uh, because like um when I have my free time, so I I just think like uh how can I use my free time to learn a new thing? So because I'm interested in technology after I joined Technovation, that's why I I want to learn a new coding skill which is Java, and I also have to apply Java for the um Ilvania Convo contest. That's why I. I learn more and more technology to apply for the uh, different competition, different extracurricular activity. Because like when I join Copa Girls, so I start to learn Scratch. When I join Illumina Contest, I start to learn Java. And when I start to join Technovation Girl, I start to learn Thunkable. I start to learn MIT App Inventor and more and more. So this is like when I join a more of a competition, I have learn a, a lot of things because of that competition and also uh, I always spend my free time to learn about technology as well that's why I can know a different uh, I can know a lot of knowledge in technology yes. wow wow so so you mentioned about the technovation girl what is it about and what the project that you made and can upgrade you to the winner of course, Wong. So, Technovation Girl is a program which is uh, motivate a uh, girl to uh, take a part in the STEM and the technology. Uh, Technovation Girl allows the girl between eight to eighteen uh, years old to um, to uh, work as a team and solve a problem in their community and submit the project to the world. And after that, they can be a winner in techno uh, in Technovation Girl program as well. So, for me, I joined it for two years, and right now, I have been. Uh, selected to become a student ambassador and student coordinator in 
Technovation Guild. So for me, at that uh, when I'm joined Technovation Guild, I uh, create a two project. So the first one is about um, all about chemistry. This is an app that can solve the uh, student problem in chemistry subject. And because I think like uh, uh, I have to wait uh, on the student in my high school. And that's why I see that mostly uh, students face the problem in chemistry. That's why we, we brainstorm the problem and we find a solution uh, to our project. And the one more thing is about uh, the app uh, called e-listening and speaking. This app can help um, students uh, in the secondary school and also in high school uh, to improve the knowledge and speaking and also in listening skill. So we have a lot of function in that app that can improve the skill as well. And also uh, now today I'm in the third year of technovation and now today I'm create a project uh, which is ESTEM. ESTEM is an app that can change from the traditional education in Cambodia to a STEM education in Cambodia. So we, we this app, we like, I think this app can integrate women to take a part in STEM because um, we, um, we, we include the STEM subject and also we include the STEM education uh, system to this app too. And that's why we create this to help our women to, and also like our people in Cambodia uh, to take a part in STEM. Yeah, thank you. Did you mention about the traditional, you want to change the traditional yeah. education to the STEM education? What is it about in your uh, app? Okay, yeah, more. Uh, because like when we survey, we saw that most of students in Cambodia, like most school in Cambodia, they just use the traditional education, which a student just learn from the course book, just learn from the textbook. And uh, for example, if they learn about the um, science subject, so they just uh, learn about the uh, like in quite called this like a uh, theory, like they just learn from it, and they never know that how exactly is like they never do experiment be beside that. So they just learn from the textbook and read it, read it, and learn from the teacher. So by the way, back over to our project ISTAM. ISTAM can change it, but how it can change it? So in ISTAM, uh, we like we focus on the STEM subject. So in that we have uh, chemistry, physics, biology, computer science, and English. So all those apps, like we use STEM education. So STEM education, we have a like step to um, do like when we focus on, when we teach a lesson. So we will uh, ask them in the question, in that lesson, we will ask them like, uh, what is the problem of uh, the lesson like? We show our aim of the lesson, and also we show if uh, if it is a uh, experiment lesson. So we will have a video to explain them uh, about the experiment uh, lesson, and also we will uh, tell them like uh, how can they use those knowledge in to apply in their real life. So in if in the in the traditional education, they never know that. Uh, how how can they use it in real life? So they just learn it, but they don't know the exactly how can how where where they can use it. But in STEM education, they will know, and they also they also can apply all those knowledge to uh, their real life. That's why we want to change it. And STEM education is really important that our Cambodian student uh, need to uh, need to got it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, wow, that that's pretty nice. So okay, uh, back back to Linda. Uh, so. Will we should encourage young women or girls like Mei Huang more and more in technology? Yes, we should. We must. Uh, we must do that. Uh, I, I, I think uh, in terms of encourage young women, it goes uh, in many layers. Uh, and it, start, it should start from young to when women is in their career, when women climbing the career ladder as well. So it's it's, it's, it's actually a whole uh, a holistic system. So let me elaborate a little bit more on what I meant by that. Um, I think we should encourage women and I, I really love what Meng Huang said about uh, creating so many apps and then once we make the technology accessible, we make people interested, people will go and do it. So the more you practice, the more you do, the more you understand why it is for. Uh, the more you're interested, the more you use it in the future, right? Because I, I remember when I was in high school, there's many, I, at that time, I genuinely enjoyed 
math, physics, and all that. And I, I don't know, I have this imagination, but I think from what Meng Hong said, you really bring this imagination to life for people to see how to relate in real world. So I think that will get a lot more people interested and less afraid of it. And then uh, to touch on the questions a little bit more from uh, what Bong Sofit asked about uh, how to encourage women, I think uh, it would, I, I would say in three layers. Uh, one is individual and then community and then the support systems. So number one is individual. I think all of us, especially women, uh, men, uh, I think especially women, uh, is that we should not judge ourselves. I, for me, uh, it's quite sad because I, I, I do, this, this talk is about reflection. I do reflect on myself that I sometimes, we are, we are, I, I, I am my worst critic. So when I want to do something, sometimes I would list down, okay, this is what I have and this is what I don't have. <laughs> Can I really do it? So um, I think for us individual, we need to take a step back, look at it. We want to do something. If we think that we can do around 70%, just go for it. This is my, the bar that I set for myself. 60%, 70%, if I think I can step in, I would step in and then let it finish and then prove myself that I actually can do it. So do it again and again and again, you start to realize that, hey, actually I can. So that's how you gain your own confidence as an individual to do something. And you sh when you are deciding to do something, you should not look into it as in, I am a woman, can I do it? You should look at it as this is a challenge. I, as a human, can I do it with my own background and capability? And um, I would say uh, as an individual, no matter what major you are, you should try STEM major. You should try computer science because I think it's applicable to all subjects. You know, history, I went to a seminar. They talk about history. They use uh, AI, machine learning to put the, because history is about timeline. It's about storytelling. So they put all those facts together to create a storyline using, using the part of the machine learning and AI in, in that field. So you see history, something artistic, so something social science. I might be wrong. <laughs> history that we actually use technology to help. Um, okay, my second point, sorry. I, I go on and on about this. So my second point is community. So I think community, it, if we only individual feel that we can, but the community keep putting us into a box, into a stereotype, nothing is gonna work. I think all of us collectively, especially people of my, my age older than me, we should start to realize that we should not tease girl. You know, uh, I think we, 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 we come from a way that we don't mean bad things, but sometimes we say something that really put somebody down. Uh, for example, we were saying that, oh, you should be more feminine. <laughs> well, the person do not want to be fem feminine. I mean, if the person want to be feminine, go ahead, be feminine. But sometimes you should not stereotype women into a certain box, certain uh, criteria. It's the same goal for men. One, we liberate that, we let men being more, um, having more freedom to pursue what they want as well. For example, uh, they do not have to have the persona being strong or whatsoever. They can just go and pursue what they want. And that is the community that I, I think that we should rethink before we say something that could affect somebody else's mood, right? Uh, number three is support. So uh, I touched down, touch on my number one, number two already. Support is very important to have the support system. Uh, women helping women, men uh, also supporting women because... Um, for women support women is that we start to, you know, sometime in a com in the organization, uh, in the old mindset, uh, mindset like, well. like the reflection support you, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> something like that. Yes, yes, yes. To give us the platform to talk, to get other people to actually see the role model as women. And sometimes we women also should support, to should expect the leader to be woman as well. Something like that. So that is women supporting women. The same as men supporting women. Uh, women. It's like all of us supporting each other. So anyone having capability should go up. Uh, we should not be uh, villainized, being emotional or whatsoever. So that's that's my point of it. So that three points. Yeah. Wow, that, that's a, a, a great point that you want to encourage young women and girls in the technology uh, to our society as well. So, but, but uh, in Singapore, are uh, there many apps that Singapore students create for their Singapore or for the worldwide? 
Uh, yes. So many? Um, there's always competition, just like uh, Mei Huang attended. So it goes from, uh, I think primary school, they start to have some coding classes as well, some primary school, if I'm not wrong. Uh, I can be wrong. Uh, but uh, going to secondary, they start to have competition. People participate in competition. Singapore has these streams, like either you go to a JC, junior college, before university, or they go for a polytechnic. So both way, they have competition, they have uh, brainstorming, even their extracurricular curricular activities they they have, 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 have all these events when you reach university there's always competition going on so uh the topic is similar to what Ming Huang is exposed to as well uh one of it is uh climate change uh uh there are also this year especially in the realm of uh, international women's day and everything they there are more talk and more uh, events that is created to uh promote more um interest in movement in in STEM as well as uh, to, to encourage women to, to participate in, uh, in all type of event. And uh, I think one more thing that's pretty interesting in Singapore is they are interested in uh, aging as well, because we, we uh, they, in this era, it's like uh, there are more older women, uh, there's more older people than uh, younger people. So uh, there are also this theme going on that uh, for aging population, yeah. Okay, so so is is are there any app that you really really interested that they they create an impact in the Singapore society? Ah, there's a or lot. I, I really cannot. I really just cannot. pick one. Just pick one. Uh, because I have been working in aging population, so I saw one from the university that they created, which is uh uh to support caregiver or people living with dementia. Uh, uh, which is similar to what I do as well, but they they touch on more whole, uh, on a more holistic view how to support caregiver because for us, for example, we need to care for our uh, older parents. So in this case, it's quite tiring. It's really tiring, and it's take a toll on the main caregiver, right? So this app is actually designed to help and finding support for for people uh, who are caring for the elderly. So this is one of the app that really touch uh with me another one uh that I, I i take note of is actually one of my students um uh this she joined this competition on her own not related to me at all it just i happened to be her final year project mentor so uh in my project she worked on the um three localization uh meanings that uh with just car camera uh, we try to uh, we, we we try to decide where the tree are in in the map in the GPS um. coordinate. So just with the car camera and the location from the image. So that's her project. But uh, she go ahead and join another competition, which is uh, about uh, climate change as well. Uh, where she work with ASEAN uh, and Asia Pacific uh, teammate. Uh, she do image processing uh, to detect garbage on the shore. So just using camera, you can detect the garbage there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's another thing that really touched because I know the person. <laughs> yeah. That 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 sounds interesting. And you are mentors of them or coaching as well regarding to the technology and AI. And I hope many Cambodian women, especially women or girls in Cambodia, approach you as a mentor in other projects. <laughs> Mei Huang, is it your mentor? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, back back to Mei Huang. So Mei Huang, uh, beside your accomplishment, you're interested in the technology. Have you heard or do you face any challenges from our society? Oh, okay, Wong. So I think, uh, of course, I face some challenge from the society. Like um, sometimes we are like we had to uh, make uh, some uh, some application happen, which is like we have to bring some uh, our idea from the so uh, society. Like, uh, but but some like people in our community like they don't work, like they don't work with our team, so it's a little bit hard to do that. But actually, we can uh, find uh, some people to like we have to survey from them. So, uh. It's a bit hard if they don't work with our team, but that's fine for me. And we can do with our team to uh, finish our project as well. Yeah. 
I think. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so how about the cultural, yeah, how about cultural stereotype or perspective on women uh, in the mm. technology as you are uh, from the rural area, have you faced some challenges yes. or some uh, discrimination, yeah. something like that, or harassment from the inaccurate kind, like our neighborhood? <laughs> of course, like, um, sometimes, like, I, I had to use, like, uh, they said that, woman, why, why you should, uh, interested in technology, why you, uh, why you fascinate in technology, like, you are just a woman, and why you take, you, why, why you want to take a career in technology, why you want to be a software developer, so uh, sometimes in our in my countryside and in my rural, uh, there's a little bit hard uh, to um, to explain uh, them to explain the people who like uh, who who have their own perspective in the technology. So sometimes they don't understand like why we why we do it, why we are a girl and uh, we go to do a project in STEM and technology. So that's it, the, uh, the problem, the, one of the problem in my community as well. But by the way, and now the day, uh, I know, I think that uh, mostly people start to think that uh, technology for is for all, for both men and women. So they start to encourage women to take a part in the technology as well. Like my parents, when I uh, when I told them that, uh, uh, ma'am, that like I'm interested in technology, I want to become a software developer, and they said, yeah, you can become it. And uh, they 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 motivate me and they encourage me to uh, take an action more and more and go ahead to do it and go ahead to uh, finish uh, the project and also um, uh, take a major in the computer science as well. Yeah. Uh, so, so because of your warm family, your parents always support you, you can come to this step, right? But how about the other students that their family cannot support them or afford them or encourage them to involve in the technology? Any message to them, May Hwang? Okay, well, so for me, the message to them, I just like... Um, just do what you love and just do what you want like uh if you want to if you love technology so i think you you just to prove them wrong if your parents said that you cannot be uh learn technology like you cannot be you go to study computer science just prove them wrong like, show them your ability show them your capability like you can do it you can uh you can success uh if you take a part in the co uh, computer science so and one more thing like uh, is my own uh, perspective and also is uh, my own physiology, uh, psychology, like I have one quote for myself, like just try it. So when you see at a competition related to the technology or some uh, other activity related to technology, so I think just try for it, just try to um, just try to join it, just try to work with other people in technology. And after that, you will know that how can it change your life? How can it change your knowledge? So after that, you will be uh, inspired. You will be know some uh, women in technology as well. And you will got an inspiration from them and show to your parents uh, to, um, uh, to let them know that we are not the only one girl who joined technology who take a part in computer science that a lot of women who take a part in that so uh i think like you can do it and uh, hope you can success in the computer science yes yeah and your parents really proud of you when you 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 make a lot of accomplishment and something like that Yes, of course. Okay. They're proud of me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the quote from Mei Huang is about try it, but the quote from Li Dai is about the sixty percent or seventy percent. You have to do it. You know? How about okay. me? I'm not. I don't have right now. <laughs> you could okay, use so, all those quotes too long. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my quote may be like encourage women. <laughs> okay, so back to our audience. Yeah, uh, we have shown that common. Okay, uh, some sin, uh, she asked the question that I want to participate in STEM education, but I don't know how to start. I want, but I don't know how to start. So, the uh, can the lead that answer the question? I would like to ask the lead that, okay. Okay, so I, I guess maybe later Ming Hong want to add on, you can add on. Uh, I think from my perspective is STEM has anything to do with math, physics, chemistry, science field. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the thing is, I think if I go to start, 
I would start with our textbook first, getting myself interested, solving problem. You know, the part that I think I'm interested in STEM is when I feel alive solving problem elegantly. For example, math problem, physics problem. You start with easy questions, right? Solve it. When you solve it, you feel great. Oh my God, I can, I can solve the problem. And then you go on more difficult question. You go more and more and more difficult. And then uh, that's how you get interested, get yourself practice. Like not just interested, you practice in it. Uh, some people uh, get also stressed when they cannot solve difficult questions and start to get less interested. But I would say that people who can solve more difficult questions, not because of they, they are smart. I think the word smart is overly used uh, in our context. It's, it's more of like an effort. For me, before I can solve a more difficult question, I practice so much, like hundreds of easy questions before I go and solve, before I could solve a difficult question. If I cannot solve, I come back, solve easy question, go back again, difficult question. It, Interested in STEM to start with it is genuinely being happy solving problem. So it's all problem solving. That's number one. Number two is getting yourself a bit further to, to expand your network, knowing people who are interested to, to, to create your own community of STEM interest group. So that, uh, for example, these days is great. You have Facebook, you saw Wing Hong, you saw people that you, uh, you, you, you saw in the events, right? Start joining those events. So people who join those events with you, most likely interested in STEM as well. So because of that, you start to be in contact of put yourself in almost the same community with this. So this itself would open more opportunity because one of you might know that, oh my God, there is this new event. We can join together. We can do something together. We, and then you can challenge yourself to participate in competition uh, in, in many other things. That's, that's one thing. Another thing is you have a support group. For example, I think Bong Sofit asks a very good question because both of us, uh, Meng Hoan and I, have very supportive parents that allow us to do whatever we want. What if you are in the environment that your environment does, may not know the potential that you are going for and therefore they do not support you at this moment? So having met those people will give you somewhat support system for you to go forward. So I would say start with having interest, practice to gain more confidence start to participate in event, getting to know people, and then your opportunity will grow. Yeah. That is all. I mean, Mei Hong, you can add on. Yes, well, uh, that's a lot of answer and that's yeah, yeah. Mei, Mei meaningful. Hong. I yeah, don't have yeah, anything to add. Like, um, I... uh, one, one more admin question uh, live from uh, Kanika. She also uh, asked about how do we get information from STEM or about STEM. Uh, the, the question is similar to the, the first question. So mm -hmm. what network, uh, what program, what something that we should involve, uh, how to get the information from STEM as a high school student or university student. Of course, well, for me, uh, for me, literally, like I know all those competition, I know about the STEM. You, uh, I just using, uh, my phone, using my computer. So, uh, for me, I found the competition. I found the opportunity from social media. So for me, I recommend, uh, her. To, I recommend her to, um, like, uh, like uh, those page who talk about the STEM, who like post about the STEM, and also like most uh, like the page that also always. Um, post about the competition in STEM. So for me, I like a lot of page. So uh, when they when they post something new or when they post uh, the uh, like uh, the competition, so I will found it. And as well, like you have to make a, like a network. So network with the people who uh, who participate in STEM, who are passionate in STEM. So like for me, I joined uh, the competition. So uh, when I joined the competition, I know a lot of people. So after that, uh, when they when they know some of the competition, they will uh, they will tell me. So that's why I know more about the STEM. So yes, that's it. Like try to uh, connect with the social media and network with the people. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, I got the data from the education ministry uh, that was trying to promote ICT and STEM more uh, from primary school upwards. But despite a small decrease, a recent report found that at uh, just only in 2019, only around 
16,000 students, 16,000 students, 7.7% 7 .7 of Cambodian students were enrolled in IT. While only 15.9% of those were female. Just only a few of them female. The, the, the data is still poor uh, and compare, uh, still low compared to the other uh, Asian uh, country. So before we ending, any message to encourage young women or girls in technology of uh, technology? Uh, Mei Huang? Okay, Bon. So the final message to them is uh, like I encourage all of you to join more activity in the STEM and also in technology because, like you know from our uh, our live stream, that te uh, technology is uh, have a uh, important role in our society in our society. So I recommend you guys to take a part in the STEM, to take a part in technology by joining more competition, by joining more the campaign or study club. So. Yes, like try to connect with the technology and try to take a part in STEM. And that's it. Uh, the way you can uh, you can got a success in life and get the way you can know a lot of things in the society, uh, which is the internet, which is the technology. Yes. So yeah. one more thing, just try it for the more opportunity. Thank you. Okay, try it. Yeah. Okay, so how about uh, uh, Lin had uh, any uh, encourage message to us? to the audience. I, I, I think from what Meng Huang said is great already. Uh, I, I want just to give uh, a bit more of comfort message to uh, our young women or young people who want to uh, pursue uh, in STEM, in computer science, in tech. Um, I just want to say everyone has a place. You know, when you are high school, you are rushing to, to find your own place. Sometimes you start to compare yourself with somebody who is better than you, thinking that you would never be that person. That's why you cannot pursue in tech, pursue in STEM. That's not true. At this age, I'm not that old, but <laughs> I'm working right now. So I start to see that uh, everyone has their own place. You just need to follow your interests and being genuinely interested in what you are doing. So being in STEM is for you to first, don't judge, don't be scared, try it first. And then uh, if it's getting hard, try more, repeat more. Uh, you think that the problem is too easy for you, but you are not ready for a difficult question. You try to increase the difficulty of the easy question by speed, meaning that, for example, last time I solved this problem in 15 minutes, now I solve it in 10 minutes. And then the faster you do it, the more ready you are to a more difficult question. Start with problem solving that itself is directing you towards STEM, the concept of STEM. Um, another thing is uh, don't judge yourself. Don't be, you, you ask yourself, would you judge your best friend the way you judge yourself? If you do not judge your best friend that way, meaning you are too harsh on yourself. And then because of that, like I said, 60, 70%, if you think you can, you just do it. <laughs> uh, and for people who are a bit older, are not a bit older, I mean, no matter what age like you are, me? no, <laughs> you're still young, Bon. You are young. You are young. <laughs> so, uh, you we we should always upskill ourselves. There's it's lifelong learning. We ne we never stop at the end of university. We never stop at the end of high school. We need to upskill because technology will improve, will change. So we need to learn about the trend and going forward. Upskill, and then when trying to put yourself in a challenge, choose your battle and go for it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your sharing. Before ending, uh, so can you tell me just only one word about technology? What is the one word that comes up in your mind right now about technology? Technology can change the world. Wow. <laughs> the word change. <laughs> okay, the word change, yeah. So how about girls and women in technology? Only one word. Wow, this is hard. This is really <laughs> hard. Uh, I, I would say that girl is here to stay. So we are going to be here and then pursue tech. And all of us, men and women, will change the world with tech. 
Okay, that that's pretty nice. Thank you. And together, we encourage young women and girls to involve in the technology. And not only women, we also men, also boy as well. sense of our society therefore we need them all of you and uh, the audience as well for unintentional uh, mistake that we are uh, live streaming and also uh, some question that we cannot answer it uh, perfectly and also uh, sorry as well for my moderator uh, the first time yeah <laughs> it's okay let's say uh, thank you uh, Mei Huang and uh, Linda I hope your next time you will thank join you. Uh, the reflection again yeah or other uh, platform or the technology girl okay thank you have a nice day goodbye thank you bye bye, bye. 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 bye.